In a controversial world first, a UK study takes aim at creating a synthetic human genome. Now, it has been about 25 years since we as humanity completed sequencing the full human genome. Technology has improved exponentially since then, and we've also crafted entirely synthetic organisms. Yes, we've long since made the very first entirely synthetic critter mycoplasma laboratorium, a bacteria. Since then, researchers have also crafted artificial yeast, so putting together every gene in the correct order, putting it inside of a shell, and creating life essentially from scratch. Now, DNA itself is pretty simple. We have our nucleotides that help us code for specific amino acids, and we can put them together in a chain and they'll work just like anything else. That's why CRISPR works so well. There's nothing special about making the products of your genes versus just putting them in there to begin with. The code reads. Now, there is a big concern about what it means to make synthetic human genomes. The idea that we could make a synthetic human entirely in a lab that would have not had parents is a little bit striking. Yes, I believe it is fully possible, but there's also the concern that this will lead to designer babies. We already know that people, when given the chance, will try to create children that have specific eye colors, or perhaps they wanted a tall child. People will pick the genetic partner to create the child they want. I've even heard stories of parents picking a non-related donor because they just really wanted a kid who might be good at music. The children who grow up from that situation are not particularly happy. And I've talked about it a little bit, but the first designer babies are reaching their adulthood, and they have a lot of stuff to say about how they were treated. Yeah, it's not a great feeling to feel like you were purchased, and if we get to the point of creating synthetic components to our genomes, it probably isn't going to be great either. However, gene editing has proven itself to be remarkably safe. There is a number of trials going on right now in people to cure conditions like hypercholesterolemia, all the way to the successful trials that we've seen with sickle cell. I think that you could actually genetically edit yourself to get the eye color you want. I don't see any reason that's not possible, although there are quite a lot of determinants for exactly what our eyes and hair and skin looks like. There are perhaps better uses for CRISPR, like curing eye diseases, which has also been done. However, invariably, we will see people trying to biohack. We'll see people trying to reverse the process of aging. And research has shown that, yeah, we've identified genes that are associated with aging. We could extend our lifespans today. Granted, that's not really how science works. Even if it were possible today, it still needs to go through FDA approval needs to be tested on animals first, maybe chimpanzees before we get to the point of using them on people. And for something like aging, that's going to take a while. But that doesn't stop people from trying. We are approaching the part of science where we say just because we can, should we do it? And I'm sorry, the answer is almost always yes. We can do it. Somebody is going to. What this really makes me think about is Blade Runner, because that's what they were doing. They were creating synthetic people that acted enough like people and were physically enough like people that they could do their jobs. But they weren't really treated like human beings. And interestingly, while that is a potential future for humanity, it's already existed in media. So what do you think about the idea of creating a human genome from scratch? This research should tell us more about how the human genome works, just like when we first sequenced it. It opened up the doors for genetic editing and understanding diseases. There may also be consequences that we also haven't even thought about. 